Do you want? Do you do you do you want to become a scientist? Know more about your profession, or just become a more knowledgeable person in general? Well, then if you do, then this video is for you. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing in my life. Whatever, roll the intro. You know, the one that I definitely have. I'm not that big of an anime fan. I do love it, but not so much that I'll watch every single anime the second it's aired. I just do watch it occasionally. But this anime, Dr. Stone, could be a highly competitive number one for my top favorite animes in the world. The protagonist is called Senku. This Senku is a freaking genius. If you haven't watched Dr. Stone yet, I advise you do because it's just incredible. A lot of people watching Dr. Stone had this weird imagination of themselves as some scientist or whatever trying to save the world, basically trying to replace Senku with their own image. But it seems like it's a far-fetched dream. It seems imaginary, it seems almost impossible. But why? The information is out there, we're literally missing nothing to become scientists. So here's what we want to do. Number one, curiosity. Science is basically just asking questions and answering them. But how are you gonna become a scientist if you don't ask those questions in the first place? They kept showing us in the anime some small parts of Senku's life as a kid, where he started to ask some small and even stupid questions, and then slowly reading articles, books, asking people and making experiments on his own just to answer these questions. And after he was done with the simple questions, he started asking some big questions and answering them, eventually building up that level of knowledge high enough to fire a rocket that reached the outer space. But sorry. What? What's even crazier is that it is possible even for a little kid to do it, he just has to expand his level of science or his level of knowledge. How hard is it to ask, hey Siri, okay Google, hey Cortana, uh, Alexa, etc. and then get your answer? How hard is it to make a little research, to read a book, to ask a person for an answer, to watch a video on YouTube? and much much more about a topic. I advise anyone who actually wants to start asking and answering those types of questions to carry a small notebook and a pen with them wherever they go so that whenever they find an ad and whenever they find a question they do not just stumble upon it and be curious for a couple of minutes and then forget about it. No, you get you get your notebook and then you write your answer and once you have any kind of, any kind of or type of free time you can actually answer this uh, question. Hell, just download a note-taking app on your phone, it's even easier. Just uh, write your question and then maybe below even write your answer. I usually just keep a little piece of paper in my wallet whenever I go so that it's easier to carry and made it a habit to myself to carry a pen wherever I go so that I'm I can write the question wherever I go and whenever I have free time I can answer it because my phone is not always available with me and then once I answer this question I write it down in the little piece of paper and then when I go home I write it down in a book I made just for this maybe one day couple of decades in the future you can just publish your this little piece of book that is like the collective answers for all the questions you asked from when you were a kid Tell you grew up. It would be a very cool uh, project. So what's holding you back on becoming a scientist and becoming curious and all? Nothing. Literally nothing. Number two. Morality. We live in a beautiful world with science and all and it's really made our lives way easier. But we are also near a dystopian ending for this world. So I want you to ask yourself the question. What am I using science for? Science is great, but only when it's used properly. So maybe right now you don't have a reason or a cause or something, but it's okay. Just keep asking questions and put this question on the top questions and, and make it a top priority to answer. Because it's so important to check the validity of your work. Now all fields of science are useful, but at the same time all fields of science are dangerous. So it's a double-edged sword basically. So you have to know what is morally correct to do and what's not and check what you want to do in your life and in your future. The anime did not talk about this but I really hope it does because we're only one episode short on closing in of the first season and I really hope it closes on in the 
philosophy and the morality of science. Number three, observation and attention to small detail. This is something Senku actually doesn't have. We see this in a lot of parts in the anime. Senku has fucked up so many times just because he wasn't observant of the things around him. Observation is basically being able to process what's around you and gather as many information as possible in the moment. So you have to be observant of what's around you to learn about what's around you and to learn from what's around you. Attention to small details is what could make the difference between a failing experiment and a breakthrough in the field of science. How can you note a change if you could not realize there was a change in the first place? How to improve yourself in this field is a very simple question with way too many answers. Chess, Sudoku, Minesweeper, Spot the Difference, those ridiculously stupid videos on YouTube and channels like 7 second riddles. And here's a fun game you can play with your friend. Go to a room full of stuff, the bigger the better. And then you go enter the room and observe it as hard as you can. Then you go out of the room and then your friend gets in and he changes something small in it or maybe sometimes leaves some evidence to make the game easier. And then you come in and try to see what the difference is in the room. Just like a detective. Speaking of detectives, do you know Sherlock Holmes? He's one of the most observant fictional characters in the world. He has such high thinking capabilities. He's a very interesting character and a person in general and I really really love uh, reading about his stories and reading people analyzing him and analyzing his thoughts and how he does it and stuff. So if you want I'll link a video in the description below to a very brilliant YouTuber who made a video called How to Think Like Sherlock Holmes in the description. I think it's a very very important thing to study and care about not just in the field of science but for everything. Number four, creativity. When it comes to science a lot of people's view on it is that it's an absolute method that it's just as simple as asking and answering but that's not actually true to a certain degree. It doesn't have a specific way to follow well it, it does have the scientific method but like in general you have to be creative with your work and way to find your answer. Your sometimes the answer is not out there you have to discover it yourself that's how science works. Answering needs creativity. In fact all scientists must use their creativity when contributing to the development of science. Scientific theories are created in many different ways. Highly creative, highly logical, sometimes both. Accidental, rational, and sometimes both. Because in science, both rationality and creativity always work together. Take heat for an example. Less than 200 years ago, everyone believed in the caloric theory that heat is basically just an invisible fluid that migrates from a hot body to a cold one. But that did not explain why friction produces heat. Eventually, after so much creative research, scientists were actually able to come up with a theory that actually does explain. The kinetic theory. The kinetic theory states the following. Matter is made up of molecules, and when a body's temperature goes up, those molecules start moving around like crazy. And because a matter is very crammed with molecules, those molecules are bound to hit each other and bounce off of, on each other and stuff. And the friction that comes when they do bounce and hit each other is what produces heat. I gave a little shitty explanation about it, but if you're actually interested in seeing someone who could actually explain it better than me, I'll leave a link in the description for a person who actually made a better video, a way better video explaining it. I can't even count how many things are like this. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I guess what I'm trying to say is, there are so many unanswered questions in this world, and we probably even have some wrong answers to questions we thought we have answered. And creativity is very important to find those answers to those questions and find out more about everything. There are a lot of things that go into science as well, so why don't you spark up that curiosity and start searching for them? Now a lot of people might ask a lot of questions about uh, how could science ever be useful to us? What's so important about learning that formula? What's so important about understanding the quadratic equation, etc, etc? Mathematics is the language of the universe, right? 
Well, science is the universe. That fucking thing you drink to maintain your energy that tastes like if gasoline and moose shit had a chemical reaction together, also known as Mountain Dew, fuck off topic, is science. YouTube is science. The network is science. Everything around us is science. We are science. Medicine is science. The computers are science. Fortnite is science. You better be appreciative, you fucking asshole. And it's really awesome to know a couple of things about everything and everything about a couple of things because not only does it give you the opportunity to know what you might want to become if you don't know but also if you do know you gotta know that all science is connected even things that aren't science based like psychology and literature and stuff you've got to learn science to understand the world nothing you learn will go in vain even if you're derived by art or literature and stuff like this, science will always be useful to you no matter what. You will still find a certain use for it and it will never go away useless. Because science branches to a huge variety of things, almost if not all things. My family gave me this science encyclopedia as a birthday present. And you don't even have to take it as a birthday present, but it's really, really cool to see like so this science encyclopedia it, it's a really cool starter to understand the world and the science around you in a very fun way so no matter what you do shit. so no matter what you do just keep learning at least one thing every day and that's about it still no outro but see you later